What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. So first things first, sorry for the long break. I went on a little vacation down to Myrtle Beach, but I'm back and I'm ready to film. So jumping right into it, today's video is going to be a little bit different. As you can see here, I've got a old glass lamp in front of me. Now, this specific glass lamp is my childhood. My grandfather built the house that my mother grew up in, the house that I grew up in, and this lamp has been in that house since he built it all those years ago. So it does need a little bit of an update. I'm going to replace all of the glass panels inside, which should be a fairly straightforward, easy project. But we also need to replace all the fixtures, so the light bulb fixtures, or I don't even know what you call them, just the housing for the light bulbs, all the wiring, we're going to replace everything. So the wire that goes through this whole chain, again, the light bulb fixtures, so everything's going to get an update. That's what we're doing in today's video. So if that sounds like something you're into, let's get started. Okay, guys, I'm going to do my best to explain this as easy as possible. Essentially, what I'm doing is just gutting this entire lamp. So I'm removing all of the old light bulb fixtures. I'm removing all of the old wires, and we're going to replace everything. So first thing I'm doing is pulling out that main line wire, and we're going to also replace it first. So we're going to pull this old wire out and replace it with the new 10-foot lamp wire from Home Depot. So lamp wire has two sides, both the same exact thing, but we're going to designate them as different. So one's going to be black, one's going to be white. And as you can see, I'm do as I'm doing this, I'm kind of cleaning up as I go since it's an older lamp. But I've got this new wire in. And again, I'm designating one side black and one side white because we're going to need to know which side is which for when we attach our new light bulb fixtures, but also so when we put it back into the ceiling, we know which side is which. So I've got that new wire in. Now we're working on the actual light bulb fixtures. So we have to cut maybe six inch wire pieces to attach to our new light bulb fixtures. Each light bulb fixture will have a bronze or a copper screw and one silver screw. Your copper screw is going to be your black, silver will be your white. So we take our new six inch wires, strip about a half inch off the end, wrap around those screws and tighten it. Again, we're going to mark these wires so we know which side is black, which side is white, because we won't be able to see the screws once we put that cover back on. So once we've got all of them replaced, we're going to take all three fixtures, we look for all three black wires from each three fixtures. Does that make sense? And then we're going to connect those together. Then we take the three fixtures, grab each of the white, connect them together. So now we've got three fixtures with six wires, three of them black, three of them white, all attached in two groups of three, right? So now we're going to take those groups of three and attach them to that main line wire. This is why we need to know which side is which. We designated one as black, marked it with a Sharpie. We're going to connect all the blacks together and connect all the whites together. It sounds a lot trickier than it is, but just take it apart as you take it apart, take pictures for reference, and you'll be able to put it back together, I promise. All right, you guys, so now we've got our lamp pretty much replaced as far as the wire. We've got all of the bulb sockets replaced. Now it's time for the fun part. We can actually start replacing the glass panels and really transform this lamp. So let's take it and flip it on its back here nice and gentle because this is a heavy duty lamp so you can see all of our panels on the inside you can see our new freshly replaced bulb sockets and wire now we're going to remove all of these panels and it's pretty simple how they're held in place as you can see at the top we've got these pressure brackets and on the bottom we've got these screw in brackets which holds the bottom of the top panel and holds the top of the bottom panel then we've got two little legs down here which holds the bottom of that rectangle so essentially all we have to do is just remove all of these screw brackets we're going to put those screws in the brackets to the side because we're going to need them later and we're just going to pull all of these panels out all right sorry for the weird uneven angle here guys but this lamp is so tall so thick that if i flipped it up on its side and tried to give you guys my normal like eagle eye view it would be too close to the camera and i don't want to risk hitting the camera or the lamp so we're gonna have to deal with this angle so like i said all i'm gonna be doing is just removing these screw in brackets and we're going to pull these panels out one side at a time so i'm going to loosen this one pull these out turn it loosen this one pull them out that way i don't have to kind of fumble with the glass i mean realistically if we break these panels it's okay but i do want to keep these panels because this is the original glass so if for some reason somewhere down the line my parents didn't want this lamp anymore and somebody wants to purchase it but they want the original glass that went with it i will have it
Okay, so we've got all of our glass outside of our lamp. Now I'm just going to grab a dampened face cloth with a little bit of cleaner on it and I'm gonna try to clean this frame as best as I can before we start putting that new glass inside. Alrighty guys, so I've completely dusted and wiped down not once but twice. So I've wiped it down with water and once with a cleaner. So this is as clean as we're gonna get it. Now we can move on to the fun part, actually working with the glass. So like I said, my mom already picked out the glass she wants. I've already picked it up, but there's a little bit of a problem. We will be able to work around it and I'm gonna explain that in a second. So the glass that she wanted, I have just enough glass to get this lamp done, but we're going to have to cut the glass in a couple spots. So. Looking at this lamp frame, we've got two sections right here where we would be able to cut and solder the glass back together without it being noticeable. So I've marked two little Sharpie lines right here. So when I put this glass back in, I know where I would need to cut and solder it back together if we've got to cut some of these pieces out of scraps, which we are going to have to do. I'll explain this more in a second and you guys will understand probably better. So we've got this frame clean. Let me clear off my desk and then we'll start cutting out all of the glass and I'll explain how I'm going to work around having the little amount of glass that I do. Alrighty guys, so I've got one of each panel of the old glass, I've got these stencils that I made, and the new glass that my mom picked out. So, this is the new glass. It is this beautiful mauve purple grape color. For some reason it is so hard to pick this color up on camera. It just leans very almost rusty or brown looking. It's not. In person it's very much a mauve grape color. It's so so pretty. You can see it kind of down here. That's almost what it looks like in person. It's very very pretty. So like I said I picked up every piece that they had. Unfortunately they only had nine of these very small pieces. So when I got home I knew I was going to have to do some finagling. So just these three are the only three pieces that I was able to fit both stencils on. So these are the only three I was able to fit both stencils on just barely. So all the other pieces of glass I had to put the stencils sideways and because of that, that means this piece isn't going to fit. So we're going to have to work around that. So Let's see what we've got of what. So right here, we've got three of each size. So we've got all eight panels of our largest piece ready to go. So we know we've got enough glass for all eight of the largest piece of the stencil. How many of the small do we have? We've got three small here, and then we've got four, five, six. So that means we're missing two of the smallest stencil. Does that make sense? So we still have to figure out where we're going to get two more of this size panel out of this glass. Now again, this does not fit sideways that's where these lines come in. So because we've got a break in the frame on the actual design, we know we'll be able to cut the glass right here and cut the side pieces from other scraps. So what I'm gonna do is take my stencil, mark where I can cut it, and we're going to just cut out two more of these panels from any piece of glass that we've got left. So all of these pieces right here only have one of these larger pieces, so we know we're gonna have plenty of glass to be able to cut these center panels from. We could cut another one right there, and then the last three we'll be able to cut the smaller outside sections from. Does that make sense? Let's cut out the ones that we know we've already got fully set. Let's cut these up first. Okay guys, so the scariest part is over with. We've got the bulk cut, so we've got all eight of our larger pieces cut, and we've got six cut of our smaller stencils. So again, that means out of our scraps, cut two more of these pieces. We're going to make those seams where I showed you on that piece of glass earlier. Okay, so. Now we have our altered little stencil here. So I'm going to cut these edges off. Then we're going to have to cut all of these pieces twice out of these scraps. Mm 
right, and just like that, we've got our last two bottom stencils. So, I would stop here, but earlier when I was cutting, I noticed something on one of these pieces of glass. So down in this corner, it looks like we've got a chip down here and I don't like that. So what I think I'm gonna do is make this piece a cut section as well. So I'm just going to lay the stencil down and I'm going to cut that section out that has the chip in it. Okay, so because we don't have to cut the left side on this number one, I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it in one piece. All right, now we can finish cutting our last two small bottom stencils. So of course, we're going to lightly grind all of the edges. Then we're just going to solder these pieces that I had to scrap together. Then we can put the glass inside the lamp. Alrighty guys, so we've got all of our pieces cut and thankfully we did in fact have enough glass to get our lamp finished. All we have to do now is just lightly, lightly grind all these edges. Then we're going to put these three pieces together to make one. Then we can put our glass back in our lamp. So I'm going to just quickly grind these off camera. If you guys have any specific questions about the grinding glass process, I have dedicated videos to every step of stained glass on my channel already. I will have my stained glass playlist linked below for you guys. So I'll be right back. I'm going to quickly grind these edges off camera. Then we can get these pieces soldered together. Alrighty guys, so we've got all of our glass here. Like I said, I very, very lightly ground all the edges. So we washed everything twice, once in the water bucket and once in the sink. Now we've got to foil and solder these pieces down here that we had to cut out of scrap. So we're not going to foil or solder any of our solid pieces. Those are ready to go right inside the lamp. I was pretty surprised when I pulled them out and saw that none of the edges were ground. You don't have to do that, but I wanted to just in case my parents had to pull these panels out for some reason. I just feel better about it knowing that the edges are at least ground since they're not going to be finished. So these we don't have to touch, but the ones we made from scraps, we do have to wrap in foil and solder them. So we're gonna do a very thin foil Oil, and we're going to lightly solder them. We don't want to build up any bead and make it not sit flat like the rest of the pieces of glass are going to. So I'm just going to quickly wrap these in foil and get them soldered nice and nice and light. If Again, if you guys have any specific questions on any specific step, I'll have my stained glass playlist linked below. Alrighty guys, I'm so excited. We've got all of our panels done. Everything's cleaned. I washed away all of the markings with acetone. So we are ready to start putting our lamp back together. All we've got to do now is pull our frame up here, put our panels in place, and then screw those brackets down to hold the glass where it needs to be. So let's grab our frame and finish up this lamp. Okay, hopefully this view will be okay for you guys, at least for these first few panels. So I've got my little flat head and all of our brackets right here. All we got to do is start popping in these glass pieces back in place. So the same thing we did earlier, just in reverse. Okay guys, so you can't really see what it looks like now because the glass is much darker. But now that we do have a darker purple glass inside of it, 
the color of this particular metal now stands out quite a bit and um, my mother isn't like me as far as like aesthetics and stuff but I did text her and showed her a little corner of it and I said look at how the metal stands out now maybe we should paint the metal black she agrees so that's what we're gonna do so I am now going to flip it back upside down I'm going to remove all the glass once again and we're going to paint this frame black I think because hold on let me grab the other glass and show you what I mean so when this was the glass when this was the glass that was inside of it it was a much lighter glass, therefore making the frame look naturally darker. Putting a darker glass in it now makes the frame look lighter and it looks more um, almost coppery. What is the word I'm looking for? Not pewter, coppery, I don't know. So I'm thinking we should paint this frame black. So obviously I can't plug it in. I tested it yesterday just to make sure I wired everything correctly to make sure the light bulbs work and it does work, but how I tested it was kind of sketchy and not something I particularly want to show you guys so I didn't show that aspect but I do know everything works and it does light up pretty bright so I'm thinking that dark frame is the best choice in my mama grace so like I said I'm going to take all this glass apart we're going to paint this frame tonight we're going to let it dry overnight and then tomorrow we'll put the glass back in and bring it out to my mom's so we can show you guys the final reveal